So you're the director of engineering at Aurelia, which stands for Chrysalis, the metamorphosis of humans into the space faring civilization. Ariel Ackloud, the founder and CEO, in a previous interview, she had once mentioned that from the outside looking in, it would seem like space exploration has slowed down ever since the moon landing. But in reality, it's just catching up. That event was so far ahead of its time that now we've reached a stage where technology and design has finally caught up with that. You spoke about this earlier as well, where you said shockingly little has changed, or it would seem like that shockingly little has changed in the moon landing. Do you think that the moon landing was such a singular event, was so far ahead of its time that we needed all this time to catch up? Or do you think it happened at the right time and we have lost decades of progress? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I don't think there's a right wrong a right time and a wrong time. I think it happened at the time it did for a lot of geopolitical reasons. Um, and I think there was a lot of you know, I think I think a lot about Star Trek cuz I am a huge Trekkie and <laughs> there's a lot of undercurrent in that show about like humanity basically had to get its act together before we could go to space and kind of pitch a united front about who we were yeah. before we could extend ourselves to other cultures and, and um, you know, societies in space. And so I think there's a level of like, yeah, Apollo was happening during a time that was like culturally just incredibly tumultuous, right? You had the civil rights movement. Um, like I wouldn't have been able to open a bank account during the Apollo era as a woman, which is bananas. Um, yeah. And so <laughs> there's parts of that that are like, we did what we could with this sort of like just purely like, sledgehammer of engineering at the time you know apollo computing was incredible i would highly recommend if you're you know interested in the, the engineering side of apollo to read the book digital apollo because it talks about the flight computer um and all of the work that had to go into getting humans to the moon when like that whole spacecraft had the processing power of less than my iphone right yeah. um so that in itself was incredible and i think we've made space exploration you know, it's evolved. It's evolved who we send. I think, you know, I was a shuttle kid. Like I grew up watching the space shuttle launch and land and I was blown away that this thing could look like an aircraft and land like an aircraft and shuttle like really opened the door to who we started to fly in space. It wasn't just test pilots. It was scientists and engineers. It was teachers. It was, you know, everyone. Um, and obviously there's still a little bit of like ivory towerness all around that because you need to be someone who's highly qualified by traditional metrics and I hope that continues to change in the future of who we get to send to space. Um, yeah. But in terms of progress, I think I think it hasn't. I think space flight in general. I don't know how to say this. Like I feel like it hasn't necessarily stalled. I think we are catching up in a lot of ways. But I think there are so many competing things for people's attention now that even when we make really big wins people don't necessarily treat it like the big one it is, right? Um, and so, you know, they get a little bit lost in the sauce of like, this space company is owned by this person and the space company is owned by that person. And they're not yeah. looking at the actual really cool work the engineers are doing. Um, or they see a rocket explode on TV and they think that's a failure. When Apollo went through so many different rockets before we got the rockets to actually work. Um, and so I think there's just sort of a, a, PR, a PR issue that we might need to change, but...